Good morning, everyone. Let us begin our worship, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with us. I have several announcements this morning. Some of them are already printed in your bulletin, but we want to welcome Reverend Alan Rock being our guest minister today. In celebration of the last day of winter, we have very, very sunny skies, so be happy about that, and thanks for all the lively dressing today. I'm a substitute laborer today. We've got to all pass our good wishes to Mike Bombay. He's feeling a little under the weather. Joyce, having to get better quickly. There's another announcement that I want to make. Uh, we all need to say happy birthday to May Young Cole. <laughs>
Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Holy God, we confess to Good morning. Good morning. It is a great, great joy for me to be with you, uh, to have an opportunity to share with you again, and uh, to join with you in worship and in friendship and fellowship. I know over the course of the last uh, several weeks, and uh, this week, and uh, the weeks to come, we've had a number of occasions, unfortunately, to to uh, celebrate the lives of those who have been dear to us. Um, those are very difficult moments. I was so impressed and so blessed to see the, the sense of uh, legacy uh, in Bill's funeral that was shared when uh, all of you were gathered here. I know you had services yesterday as well and uh, later on again uh, this coming week. All of those remind us of how important it is for us to be God's people together. Because we are God's people together, we gather for worship, we gather to learn, to grow, and to become what God has called us to be. I'd love to share with you this morning, uh, uh, during this season of Lent, these words that God has for us this morning. These are found in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Uh, beginning at verse 27. Let's listen now as we hear God speaking to us in a very real way about how we can become what he has called us to be. But to you, to you who are listening, I say this, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If, once, if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks of you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, 
What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them. <coughs> lend to them without expecting to get anything back. And then, then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Let's pause in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. For the privilege of being here and being together, being in this place where together we draw strength from one another. And here in this place where we see compassion so wonderfully displayed, where we see love and kindness shared. Help us, oh God, to take it one step further, to go beyond to hear your words that speak to us this morning and so enact them into our lives that it simply transforms us. This we pray and ask in your name. Amen. Well, Ben shared with us that yes, it's springtime. And you can almost feel it this weekend, can't you? The weather yesterday and today, everybody on, you know, there's just a buzz and on the streets and uh, stores are crowded. And we're all uh, out. I was out in my yard yesterday picking up sticks and cleaning debris and trying to fix up this thing in my, the front of my yard where I'm going to put a, like this little well and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's still yet to be, so I'm dreaming of it to be. Uh, but uh, all of those things that we're all excited about doing, all of that is a part of what spring is about. And, and also those other things that uh, we don't like to think about, like cleaning out dirty closets and uh, looking at the windows that I looked at yesterday and decided not to wash. <laughs> all of those things are a part of what this spring cleaning is all about for, for all of us. It's a part of the routine. And that's a part of what we celebrate during this, this season, this time. But we know not only is it just spring, it's also Lent. And Lent is a time for us where we take a moment or two to step back and, and to look and to think and to, to see where we are in relationship with others and with God. And, and Lent helps us to kind of refocus ourselves and helps us to sense that, uh, well, maybe in the midst of all of the things that have been going on, are we more Christ-like than we were the year before? Have we grown into the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ during this year? Lent is a time in which we look at those things. And then, and then, of course, in the midst of spring and in the midst of Lent, we have a war happening globally in our world. And that, too, has caused us to step back and to pause and to think a little bit more deeply and a little bit more forthrightly. What is happening? What has led to those things? Why is it going on? How devastating it is to see the malice and the disregard for human life. But also, how incredibly moved are we by the stories of courage? By the stories of compassion from so many. All of those things are happening in 
our world and in our lives right now. And into the midst of those kind of things that are happening to us, they were happening to the people in Jesus' time as well. And Jesus shares some incredible words, and he tells them this. If you're listening, if you're listening, I've got a word for you. And he says this. I've got an answer. Because here's what we know. We know that spring has to be more than just about picking up sticks in our yard. We know that Lent has to be more than just giving up ice cream for a few days. We know that all of the things that we've heard about this war say something about our own character. So in the midst of all of those things, God wants to take us to something better and bigger and deeper. Better, bigger, deeper. And to do that, he gives us this thing that we call the golden rule. <clears throat> do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule. I hope it doesn't surprise you, but I don't know if you can see this or not. In our hospital, we are using that theme this year. In every department, we're talking with everybody in the hospital about what does it mean to do unto others? That is our theme at the hospital. And I hope you're excited about that. I am, because I get to come to East Department, and one of the things that I'm doing is, I have this magnificent print of a Norm Rockwell painting with the golden rule on it. And it has the pictures of people all around the world. I love this painting. And it just emphasizes to all of us that the world is an awfully large place. And that we should embrace the whole of the world when we talk about our faith. And this particular painting helps us to see that. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the golden rule. Jesus, in Luke 6, we, we know things that happen. Uh, Jesus has spent time in the wilderness in Luke, the fourth chapter. He's called his disciples. And he's begun to share with them about the nature of the kingdom of God. And in the understanding of this nature of the kingdom of God, he is sharing with them what it's like to be in this kind of a kingdom. Totally different from the way in which the world thinks or operates. And in the midst of those things, Jesus gives some impossible commands. He starts with this. Love your enemies. Whoa. How do we do that? There are our enemies. How do we love them? He says this. Do good. Do good to those who hate you. How do we do that? I mean, we can do good for those who do good things for us, <laughs> right? We can do good for those that we care about. But when someone actively hates us, how do we do good? Bless them that curse you. Bless them. Say good things about them. Those who say bad things about you. Bless <coughs> them that curse you. Now, I always think my dad was a waterman, and you know, watermen are known for some pretty flowery speech, and I've heard pretty much every cuss word that you can probably ever say. 
and I probably have the ability to curse out somebody fairly well. Uh, it's not it. Bless those who curse you. How hard is it for us to say good things about people that we know are saying bad things about us? It's just not our nature. Pray. Pray. Pray for those who mistreat you. It's hard to do, isn't it? These are almost impossible commands for us because they get at something that we recognize. It's not our nature. This is against everything within us, isn't it? To love. To do good. To bless. To pray. It's hard. In the midst of that, we begin to understand something. Because we, we, we get a sense of what our nature is like. It's about revenge. It's about our own perspective. It's about who we are. And that's hard to step away from. The love of the little story about, uh, and it kind of illustrates for us kind of where we all are. Uh, it illustrates the story. Uh, it's about this dad who uh, had to, to get a uh, birthday gift for his daughter. So he was running into the department store to pick up a Barbie doll for her. Uh, he looked and uh, he was uh, looking on the shelves and he saw all these different kind of Barbies. Well, first of all, there was Beach Barbie, 1999. And then there was Cheerleader Barbie, 1999. And then there was Pet Shop Barbie, 1999. And, and then he saw this other one, Divorce Barbie, $199.99. <laughs> and he went, whoa. Is that a mistake? Because all the others are $19.99 and this one's $199.99. And the, uh, uh, the person there said, oh no, oh no. You see, because divorce Barbie, well, she has Ken's house and she has Ken's car and Ken's furniture and Ken's RV. <laughs> Our nature. Yeah. You see what he gets at is this sense of perspective on our part. It reveals to us this golden rule to do unto others, to love, to do good, to pray, to bless. It reveals that sense in which we really truly are centered on ourselves. And it makes it difficult to, for us to reach beyond. Our, our perspective about who we are keeps us from a golden rule. I remember it was in the 12th grade, my senior year in high school. We were going to the state fair in Richmond. And we stopped along the way at a McDonald's and I got a fish sandwich. And I started to throw up and be sick. And I was so sick that whole day at the fair. I can't tell you how many times I threw up. Here it is, more than 45 years later, I have never <laughs> eaten a fish sandwich. <laughs> and we got since. That's our perspective. That's who we are. So how, how do we get to a place where we can, in the midst of an enemy, love them? In the midst of people who hate us to do good? In the midst of those who would say bad things about us to bless them? For those who mistreat us to pray for them? How do we get there? That's what 
Jesus is trying to help us understand that on our own, we are so centered in ourselves that we can't get there. And Jesus says, if you're listening, if you're listening, you need a golden rule in your life that helps you understand that on your own, you cannot do these things. Do you see that? This is what Lent really is about. It's about us recognizing that, our, that on our own, we cannot become the new creations. We cannot become those kinds of people that God wants us to become and that we want to become on our own. Not capable of it. And so our dependence has to be upon God. This golden rule helps us understand that. And it helps us see that even though we fall short from time to time, trust this promise from God. Paul says it in, in uh, Philippians 1, verse 6. That God, who, create, who started a good work in you, will bring it to completion or perfection. That the masterpiece that God started with you, He will one day complete. The golden rule is a way for us to get there. But there's a second reason that he gives us a golden rule. A golden rule comes to us for another very, very important reason, and it's this. How do we respond? When there's enemies around us. How do we respond when people hate us? When they curse us? When they mistreat us? Jesus says, love them. Jesus says, do good. Jesus says, bless them. Jesus says, pray for them. How can he say that? Why does he say that? And he says it for this reason. And it's this, and I hope we get this, because it speaks to everything that we're experiencing in spring and Lent and in this war. And it's this. That we do not have to allow the evil that others want to, put on, want to put upon us. We do not have to allow that evil to be on us. You see how incredible that is? That the best response to evil is not more evil. To become like them, the best response to evil So Jesus calls us to love, to do good, to bless, to pray. What a wonderful and incredible opportunity that is for us as the people of God. To recognize a golden rule that makes a difference in our lives. And here's Here's the third thing. You know, it's called a golden rule because uh, a Roman emperor had these words printed in his palace in gold paint, or in gold, actually, in the palace, do unto others. And that's how it became known as a, the golden rule. But it becomes golden for us when we recognize its impact, when we recognize that we have the opportunity to show God's remarkable love to the world around us. And so, this morning, when we, when we think about all of the things that are happening in our own community, when we think about Lent itself and, and where we are in our relationship with God, and, and in the face of all of the things that bring about war, what we can do. We understand that there is an opportunity to
to give expression to the love of God. Because here's the real true point. The golden rule means that it's our move. That we go first. Instead of letting evil have the first strike, we begin with love. Here's the truth. Love. Love. Love always initiates. First John 4.16 says that we love God because He first loved us. So this morning, there is an opportunity for us to be God's love in a world, in a community, in a neighborhood where other people are hurting. As we think about this war in Ukraine, it reminds me of a story that I read not long ago in the Washington Post. And, and if you take your mind to where Ukraine is, and then drop down a little bit to the south, you'll see Romania, uh, Moldova, uh, over there as well. And then near Turkey, you'll see the country of Bulgaria. And it take, the story takes place back during World War II. And the incredible story that, that takes place gives us pause to understand the impact that a golden rule can have in our lives. What they did was this. Hitler and the Nazi regime were doing all throughout Europe in terms of what we know they did in terms of the Holocaust and what they call the final solution. And in the midst of all of that, they had sent trains into Bulgaria with hundreds and hundreds of cars <laughs> to somehow collect all of the 48,000 or so Jewish people in Bulgaria and take them to Treblinka, which was the Nazi concentration camp. The Eastern Orthodox Church was the primary church there in Bulgaria. And their bishop heard about what was about to happen. And he went. And as he heard the cries of, of the Jewish citizens who were there, he began to tell all of the people of the church what was happening. And they began to respond accordingly. They were touched, changed by this message of this Eastern Orthodox bishop. And in so doing, they began to, to hide Jewish people everywhere. And, and one of the bakers would hide them in their ovens. Uh, people would hide them in their attics. Uh, as the people were being gathered, they heard the cries of the Jewish people. And the bishop, he stood up and he said, if I have to, I will stand in front of the trains and on the tracks. And not only him, but hundreds and thousands of other people within the church did just that. And the result was this, that very few of those 48,000 <coughs> Jewish people, unlike all of the rest of Europe, were <coughs> saved. It's a testimony to a golden rule that makes a difference in people's lives. They sent a letter from, from uh, the Nazi officer in charge back to Berlin, and the note said, while these people don't seem to understand what we're doing, they're not as enlightened as we are. And yet, they were enlightened. 
they were listening. They heard the words of Jesus from the mouth of that bishop who said, love. Do good. Bless. Pray. How does that make sense for us? How does that make sense for us this morning? In a little part, let me finish with maybe just one last story. The story is this. A young father was uh, coming home from work. He, uh, he really needed to, to do a little bit more. He didn't get it all, all of his work done at the office, and uh, he, he knew that his, his small son would want to play with him. So he just needed a little bit of time. Uh, so as he, would, as he got home, he looked at the paper, and he saw that in the paper they printed this map of the world. And so what he did is he cut it out and made it into kind of a puzzle, okay? And, uh, and so he, he put them all in an envelope, and then he gave them to his son, and he said, put this picture of the world together. And he figured, uh, well, this will take him 30 or 40 minutes or so. I'll, it'll give you time to get everything done. Well, about five minutes later, the boy comes back and he says, I did it, Dad. Can we play now? And the father was amazed. And he asked, how were you able to put all of that together so fast? And he said, well, on the back side of that picture of, of the world was this picture of a man. And, and once that man, once I put that picture together of the man, the whole world kind of fell into place. <laughs> and that's the call of the world. That's the importance. That's the difference that this can make in the world in which we live, globally, in our own country, in our own state, in our own community, in our own neighborhood, in our own church. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. What a great privilege it is for us to worship together, to hear your word, and to be so challenged by it that it brings renewal and refreshment to our hearts. Bless us, O oh God, this day. And may your word take on new life and new meaning. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.
We do want to take the opportunity to thank you for your continued support of our church and for all that God is doing through you uh, in our community and around the world. Uh, your gifts make it possible for us to continue uh, God's ministry here uh, in this area as well as uh, special opportunities all around the world. And so we are incredibly thankful for your dedication and uh, for your generosity uh, and we continue to uh, to ask God to uh, bless the gifts and those who give them. Uh, we extend that as well to all of those who may be watching uh, online as well. And uh, We are thankful for all that uh, God has given to us and for our opportunity to give back. Let's pause as we bow in a word of prayer as we think of the blessings that God has given to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words and for the blessings that you have given and shown to us in our lives. We ask now, God, that you would take and use these gifts to show love, kindness, and blessing to others. These things we pray and ask in your name. Amen. This is an opportunity for us to pray together as God's family. Uh, I know that there are particular joys. I know that there are particular sadnesses or concerns that you might have. Certainly among those is the war in Ukraine, but also perhaps even more right here at home uh, as we have celebrated the loss of, of individuals within our church family and within our community. Uh, that have been meaningful to many of you. So we take the time now this morning to pause and to bow in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we come knowing that love is the answer. <coughs> We're praying, God, for wisdom and insight and, and understanding about how that answer how that golden rule of our lives can, can really be lived out. Help us, God, as we seek better, bigger, deeper understandings of your grace. We come this morning, oh God, and, and we pray for the cessation of all war. We pray for the presence of peace globally. We pray, oh God, for those who have experienced the incredible horror of what war is. Cause them, oh God, to know that you are with them. Pray, O oh God, as we see the face of evil and what it looks like. That in so seeing it, we would do all that we can not to embrace any of those things that lead to that kind of evil. Let us be motivated, O oh God, not just by the fear of becoming something like that, but also by the love that you call us to, that we have experienced in our own lives and in our own hearts. This morning, oh God, as we are listening, says Jesus, help us to understand how fully he wants his kingdom to be a part of our lives, of how deeply he wants us to be like him. Help us, O oh God, this morning to take more fully that call to not only invite 
invite you into our lives. But to take control of our emotions and our thinking. To be submitted to your call to live a golden rule life. No matter where we are, no matter who we're with, bless us now, God, as we continue in this time of Lent, as we celebrate and as we grieve, as we mourn, and as we live with the expectation. Bless us, O oh God, and teach us with sincerity of heart to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <coughs> As we close this morning, again, my great joy to be with you and to celebrate this day with you. My hope and my prayers for you as you continue on is that God will bless you, that God will touch you, and that this season of Lent and this time before Easter will so bless your hearts that you will see God's change in all things. Amen. Let's join together for our benediction. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. And we are listening, oh God. We thank you for that. Most of all, oh God, we thank you for your love, for the height and depth for the length and the width of your love toward us. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that our roots would grow down deep into the soil of your marvelous love. Amen.